Ibrahim and Sarah had been married for a long time but had not been blessed with a child. Despite their remarkable patience and complete surrender to God's will, they continued to pray for a child even as they became old. Ibrahim proposed to Sarah that she should allow her slave Hajar to marry him. He hoped that through Hajar, God might bless them with a child who could be their heir. Sarah agreed with this suggestion, seeing it as a wise course of action. Despite their increased efforts and sincere prayers, many more years went by without any indication of a child from either a woman. Sarah said to Ibrahim, You have become old. Why don't you beg God once more for a child who will bring us joy? Ibrahim prayed with great passion for a child who would be righteous and patient. God responded, I will grant you a patient child and then I will test your obedience through him. Ibrahim's prayer was answered, but it didn't happen through Sarah's womb. Instead, Hajar gave birth to a son and they named him Ismail. Despite Sarah's virtue, she couldn't help but feel extremely disappointed and jealous of Hajar. She began to complain a lot to Ibrahim about this unfortunate twist of fate. It was natural for Sarah to feel as she did. God in his wisdom did not wish to aggravate her further in this difficult situation. So God commanded Ibrahim to take Hajar and Ismail to the sacred place Bakka. Not because they had done anything wrong, but to ease Sarah's burden on one hand and to fulfill God's divine plan for Ismail and his descendants on the other. After their arrival, Ibrahim returned to Sarah as he had promised her that he would return. Hajar was left alone in the desert with Ismail, following God's command. There was a single tree nearby and Hajar sheltered Ismail in its shade. As the day progressed and the sun grew hotter, Ismail became thirsty. They desperately needed water, so Hajar stood up and rushed towards the nearest mountain to search for water. The mountain came to be known as Mount Safa. From that elevated spot, she couldn't see Ismail, so she went back to him. Then, she spotted what seemed like water on a nearby mountain named Marwa and hurried towards it. Upon reaching it, she realized it was just a mirage. She realized that she couldn't see Ismail again, so she returned to him. In this manner, she ran back and forth between Safa and Marwa seven times. As she returned to Ismail, exhausted and on the verge of despair, she witnessed a miracle. Water had miraculously begun to flow and gather at Ismail's feet. She collected some of this water, which later became known as Zamzam. Three days later, Ibrahim returned to see Hajar and Ismail, and he expressed his gratitude and prayed to Allah. When word spread that there was water in Bakka, many people settled there. Ibrahim had great love for Ismail and saw him as his only legacy even as he got older. One night, Ibrahim had a dream that required him to do something that would seem impossible to anyone else. He woke up and woke his son, saying, My son, I had a dream that I am sacrificing you. What do you think about this? As a prophet, Ibrahim received prophetic dreams and he understood that this dream was a divine command from God. Ismail responded, Father, do as you have been commanded. You will find me, God willing, to be patient. Ismail didn't hesitate at all. Even at his young age, he understood the importance of obeying God and that God's wisdom was beyond human understanding. Ibrahim gazed at him with tears in his eyes and said, You are such a great support to me in fulfilling God's command. Ibrahim and Ismail started their journey, pretending to collect firewood from Mina, the place where God had commanded the sacrifice to take place. On their way, Satan appeared to Ibrahim in a disguise of an old man. He asked, Ibrahim, what do you intend to do with this boy? Ibrahim responded, I must carry out a sacrifice. The old man said, 
you will slaughter a boy who has never sinned against God in the least? Ibrahim stated firmly, God has commanded me to do so. The old man objected, No, God has forbidden you from doing this. It is Satan who is commanding you to carry out this act. Ibrahim responded firmly, No, the one who has elevated me to my current status is the one who has commanded me to do this. I will not engage in further conversation with you. The old man warned, Ibrahim, you are a leader and people will follow your example. If you sacrifice your son, others may do the same to their children. However, Ibrahim remained steadfast to obey God's command and the man quietly left without being noticed. When they arrived in Mina, Ismail laid down, prepared to obey God's command. With tears in his eyes and determination in his heart, Ibrahim quickly moved the blade across his son's throat. He expected to feel the shudders of death, but to his astonishment, the blade did not cut and Ismail remained remarkably calm. As Ibrahim and Ismail tried to comprehend this unexpected turn of events, they heard God's voice saying, O oh Ibrahim, you have fulfilled my command from the dream. This is how we reward the righteous. This test was to prepare you for great rewards in paradise. It was the test I promised you when I gave you this patient child. Gabriel brought a majestic ram from the nearby mountain and gave it to Ibrahim. Gabriel explained that this ram would be offered to God instead of Ismail. Ibrahim felt immense relief, tears of joy streaming from his eyes as he embraced his son. Together, they sacrificed the ram and praised God.